the U.S. Navy just confirmed something that could redefine naval warfare forever. Last month, Vice Admiral Daniel Cheever stood before top military leaders and made a bold announcement that sent shockwaves through defense circles worldwide. The MQ-25 Stingray will take flight in 2025. And by 2026, it'll be fully operational aboard American aircraft carriers. This isn't just another drone project, it's the dawn of unmanned carrier aviation. And it's happening far faster than anyone predicted. Five major defense giants have just been awarded multi-billion dollar contracts to develop loyal wingman drones designed to fly in formation with our pilots. Meanwhile, Turkey has already proven it can be done. Their TB-3 drone successfully landed on a moving ship with zero human control. China, of course, is racing to catch up. The era of drone aircraft carriers isn't on the horizon, it's already here. What's unfolding right now is the biggest leap in naval aviation since the first jet landed on a carrier deck back in the 1940s. The U.S. Navy isn't just adding a few drones to its air wings, it's re-engineering how America projects power across every ocean on Earth. And in this video, you're about to discover exactly how these drone carriers work, why they're vital to our national security, and what they mean for the future of American naval dominance. The MQ-25 Stingray marks a first for the U.S. military, a bold, full-scale leap into unmanned carrier aviation. This isn't a small recon drone catapulted into the sky and left to chance. The Stingray is roughly the length of an F-A-18 Super Hornet, but with a wingspan rivaling the E-2 Hawkeye early warning aircraft. Developed by Boeing, this massive unmanned tanker has been in the works for years, pushing the boundaries of aircraft manufacturing. Its deployment was delayed from 2025 to 2026, not due to performance issues, but because scaling production for something this advanced proved a monumental challenge. Here's why it's a game-changer. Right now, up to 30% of Super Hornet missions are devoted to mid-air refueling rather than combat. Every time a fighter acts as a flying gas station, that's one less jet available for battle. The MQ-25 flips that equation. A single Stingray can carry 15,000 pounds of fuel up to 500 nautical miles from the carrier, enough to refuel four to six aircraft in a single sortie, then return, refuel, and do it all over again. The USS George H.W. Bush has become the first carrier equipped with what the Navy calls an unmanned air warfare center. But don't picture a simple control room. This is a cutting-edge command hub capable of managing multiple drones operating hundreds of miles away, all at once. At its heart is the MD-5E ground control station, developed by Lockheed Martin's legendary Skunk Works, the same mines behind the State Route 71 Blackbird and F-117 Nighthawk. In November 2024, the Navy made history when operators used this system to control a General Atomics MQ-20 Avenger directly from a moving aircraft carrier via satellite link and autonomous systems. For the first time, carrier-based drone operations weren't just theoretical, they were proven, live, and successful. And that was just the beginning. In September 2025, the Navy announced a new wave of contracts that changed everything. Five companies were tasked with developing collaborative combat aircraft, next generation, carrier-launched, loyal wingmen, designed for frontline combat. These aren't refueling drones. They're autonomous fighters, built to fly side by side with human pilots, multiplying firepower, extending mission reach, and shaping the next era of American air dominance at sea. Andrel, Boeing, General Atomics, Northrop Grumman, and Lowhead Martin are racing to build the next generation of naval aviation, and each brings a distinct edge to the table. General Atomics already has its YIFQ-42A flying in an Air Force program. Andrel's YFQ-44A is about to join flight testing. Boeing brings lessons from the cancelled UCLAS program and success with the MQ-25. And Northrop Grumman proved the concept with the X-47B, the first drone to autonomously land on a carrier back in 2013. The Navy's loyal wingman requirements reveal a bold, cost-driven approach. Each drone is targeted to cost roughly $15 million, far below the Air Force's $25 to $30 million goal. That price difference changes everything. Instead of treating these machines like priceless fighters to be preserved at all costs, the Navy can treat many of them as semi-expendable tools, cheap enough to risk, fast enough to replace. These drones are engineered for limited service life, a few hundred flight hours before being cycled out, enabling rapid production and surge deployment. That expendable mindset unlocks radical tactics. Picture an adversary threatening a carrier strike group. Rather than sending pilots into dense, lethal airspace, 
commanders can swarm the area with loyal wingman drones to suppress air defenses, collect battlefield intelligence, and even carry out strikes. Losing a handful of disposable drones costs far less than losing trained pilots and their years of experience. It costs you nothing but makes a huge difference to us. Pulling off carrier-based drone operations is an engineering Everest. Landing any aircraft on a moving deck demands extraordinary precision. The carrier pitches and rolls on swells, crosswinds shift in an instant, and the runway is barely 300 feet long, leaving no margin for error. Humans spend years perfecting carrier landings. Programming autonomous systems to handle these variables reliably is one of modern aviation's toughest challenges. The Navy didn't start from scratch. Lessons from the X-47B proved autonomous carrier launches and arrested recoveries were possible, using advanced sensors to track the ship's motion and adapt approaches in real time. Today's platforms build on that foundation. Systems like the MQ-25 include even more sophisticated sensors and control logic, letting drones operate in conditions that would challenge human pilots. Carrier control systems themselves have been rethought, from continuous radio-guided procedures to satellite links, encrypted data pipes, and AI-driven autonomy that lets a few operators manage many drones at once. That technological backbone enables tactics impossible with manned aircraft alone. A carrier could launch swarms of loyal wingman drones to blanket thousands of square miles. Each drone acts as a distributed sensor and shooter, sharing real-time data across the fleet. Adversaries won't just face a 60 to 70 jet air wing, they could be up against hundreds of networked unmanned systems working in coordinated waves. The strategic effects reach far beyond single battles. Carriers are constrained by pilot availability and human limits, fatigue, crew rotations, and the finite number of qualified aviators. Drones don't need sleep. They can sustain operations as long as maintenance cycles and logistics allow, providing relentless presence and continuous ISR, intelligence, surveillance, reconnaissance. That endurance matters enormously across the Pacific. In a protracted crisis with China, American carrier strike groups might need to remain on station for months, far from friendly ports. Manned air wings struggle to sustain high-tempo operations over extended periods. Mixed air wings, pairing human pilots with loyal wingman drones, let commanders rotate pilots while keeping unmanned systems constantly engaged, maintaining pressure, presence, and operational reach across vast distances. The cost advantages of naval drone aviation go far beyond the price tag of each aircraft. Training a Navy pilot costs millions and takes years of intensive preparation. Every pilot represents an enormous investment in skill and experience, one that can't be easily replaced if lost in combat. Drone operators, on the other hand, can be trained faster and more affordably, often through advanced simulations rather than live flight hours. And as technology progresses, a single operator could command multiple drones at once, multiplying a carrier's air power without multiplying its crew. A glimpse of this future is already visible. Turkey's groundbreaking success with the TCG Anadolu offers the world's first look at real drone carrier operations. In November 2024, the Bayraktar TB3 drone achieved fully autonomous takeoffs and landings from the ship's deck, soaring to 20,000 feet and completing its maneuvers without human input. By September 2025, Turkey plans to begin routine combat operations, becoming the first nation to deploy fixed-wing drones from naval vessels. This milestone proves that drone carriers don't have to be massive nuclear-powered giants like America's supercarriers. The TCG Anadolu, just 231 meters long compared to the U.S. Navy's 333-meter carriers, shows that smaller nations can also field powerful drone fleets using modified amphibious or helicopter carriers. The global impact of this technology is profound, it could reshape naval power dynamics and make advanced carrier operations accessible to more countries. China recognized this potential early. Intelligence reports suggest that its navy is developing large flying wing drones specifically for carrier use. The Type 003 Fujian, equipped with electromagnetic catapults, could launch heavier unmanned aircraft than traditional steam systems allow. And with China's doctrine emphasizing swarm tactics using affordable weapons, drone carriers fit perfectly into their evolving strategy. This international competition has pushed the U.S. Navy to move faster. Recent contracts awarded to five major defense companies underscore America's determination to stay ahead, ensuring U.S. drone carriers remain the most advanced and capable in the world. Still, integrating manned and unmanned aircraft brings complex challenges. Fighter pilots train for years to operate as cohesive teams, 
communicating seamlessly in high-stakes missions. Adding autonomous systems introduces new dynamics. Machines must be intelligent enough to follow commands precisely without overwhelming the pilot. The Loyal Wingman concept envisions drones acting as extensions of human pilots, but their control systems must feel natural and intuitive so that pilots can focus on strategy, not micromanagement. The artificial intelligence driving these drones represents some of the most sophisticated military tech ever created. Each system must make independent decisions if communication is lost, identifying friend from foe, analyzing threats, and executing responses within strict rules of engagement. Programming such intelligence for the chaos of real combat is incredibly complex, and safety is paramount. A single malfunctioning drone could endanger an entire carrier and its crew of over 5,000. That's why every system includes layers of redundancies and fail-safes to ensure predictable, safe behavior even if the primary controls fail. Testing these safeguards takes years, but it's essential to guarantee reliability in combat conditions. The Navy envisions a future where humans and machines fight as one. Imagine F-35C Lightning Tooth flying beside loyal wingman drones, the fighters leading their robotic partners into danger while staying safe. This teamwork brings unmatched tactical flexibility. Drones will also simplify maintenance. Without cockpits or life support systems, they're easier to repair and upgrade, though their advanced electronics need expert crews. The MQ-25 Stingray launches in 2026, paving the way for fully integrated drone air wings by the 2030s. Meanwhile, allies like the UK, Japan, and Australia are advancing their own drone carrier programs, strengthening global cooperation. Drone carriers will transform naval warfare, making future ships smaller, cheaper, and more efficient, yet equally deadly. Through it all, America's legacy of innovation endures. From steam power to nuclear propulsion, and now to AI-driven carriers, the U.S. Navy continues to lead. By uniting human skill with artificial intelligence, it's building a smarter, safer, and stronger fleet for the battles ahead.